Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dev Show. Today I'm being joined by a good friend of mine. His name's Carson Tyler. Carson's now a two-time director with his most recent film being released in June called Running Backwards. So without further ado, let's bring Carson in. So Carson, uh, welcome back to The Dev Show. This is your third time being on the show, but it is your second time being on one-on-one -on -one with me. We're here to give you a kind of spotlight for... Uh, being a new director, like I've explained in uh, some of my previous uh, Dev Interviews Everyone series interviews, is I would love to follow along with your journey just as much as people want to follow along the Dev Show. I, I would like to follow along with you uh, once a year, you know, twice a year, or whenever something that you are uh, making pops up, such as your second film, which is Running Backwards. Awesome, man. It's great to be back. Uh, also, me and my answer seem a little bit lagged. I just woke up like 10 minutes ago, so I uh, just want to give that forewarning. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I'm going to lower you in my ears here, but uh, it's all good. Maybe we can get some some fresh first thoughts of the morning answers from you. So, um, Well, really, honestly, I want to know from you how you feel becoming a two-time director uh let's just start with that how do you feel um it feels interesting because okay so the first film the first short film was called no return and no return did pretty well and everyone seemed to enjoy it there wasn't really any bad there wasn't really any negative critiquing of it and that's very rare for your first thing so whenever you go to make a second one after that, it's so nerve wracking because it's like, man, am I going to do as good as the first one? And that's yep. the big, because normally, you know, people will make something and then they move slowly up and up yeah. and up and up and it gets better because the first one is like, oh, this is the problem. This is the, I didn't have that when I returned. So now well, I'm trying to, oh, sorry. No, you're, <laughs> you're good. You made a a total uh, psychological switch there between films. So going from one genre to another, um, that must have some challenges too. So, I mean, oh yeah, it's a lot because I mean, you go from thriller to a drama, and it's two completely different fan bases. It yep. is the people who love John Carpenter's films and the people who love, for example, um, who does dramas. Who does dramas? Who, um, well, there's a there's a bunch of great drama film directors. Um, like, well, I mean, a lot of the great directors' films are drama. I mean, mob films are mob films, but they're also drama. Yeah. But uh, I mean, more dramatic, soap soapy films are like, uh, man, that's that's tough. Wes Anderson. Yeah, Wes Anderson's a great example for it. Yeah. So these two people are completely different, and yet they still can create great stuff. So I think that was my biggest fear with that was going back again and trying to hope that I was able to do it again. Because yeah. you don't you don't want to be you don't want to be in that position of okay everybody liked your first one but they didn't like your second one. I yeah. think that's the biggest fear of any filmmaker. I think that uh I think that's what holds a lot of them back from doing it again. But uh yeah, yeah. it was but altogether, it feels really good. It feels really good that this one was perceived well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you have a little bit of time or lee leeway to experiment in different uh, genres? I mean, there's no there's no harm in doing it, even if you aren't successful in one or are in the other. I think that you should always try it, try it out. And I mean, you know, everybody has bad films. I'm not saying yours is a bad film, but say you want to go step into like soap operas or you know, something, it totally flops. I don't see why that should shame you for your yeah. rest of your career, right? Yeah. I don't think that it's a bad thing to experiment with stuff. I yeah. think that a lot of people do it. I um, I would love to talk about a project I'm doing later on in the interview, but um, okay. on it, it's it's very interesting. It's it, And it's, as a filmmaker, it's very experimental. And um, I'm going to talk about it for the first time here. I hadn't talked about it on Instagram. I hadn't talked about it anywhere. Hey, let's but, do it. Uh, there's we'll been like breaking it. news in every uh, one of our interviews. Spider Man, yeah. one it was Spider Man. No, yep. uh, 
Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna hold you back. I'll go ahead and talk about it. This is yeah, quite, just go is, for it. It's a, it's a great question because a lot of directors are afraid to experiment because a lot of people have a pattern that works for them. Mm-hmm. I don't have that pattern yet, so I still get to figure yeah. out what works for me. So I decided about a month ago that hey, okay, there are too many people that won't do projects because they won't work on stuff because they think they need this very high expensive camera. I'm currently in the works of filming a hundred short films that will not, they won't get released one at a time. Okay. They won't get released one at a time. What do you mean? Or they will get released one at a time. So, okay. What is, what's going to happen is we've already completed four. Okay. And they're all be fit being filmed with my phone. Right it's on. my phone, me and an actor. I'm directing an actor, and I'm going back kind of like, kind of the silent films, where sure. I am I am honing on my directing craft by being able to work with an actor primarily to make their emotions like their physical attributes, like how they react to stuff, better. Mm-hmm. So it helps oh, wait, me so- and it helps them. Are you just directing and filming, or are you uh, working with them as an actor as well? Um, there are one or two that I'm in, but um, I have plans on working with a lot of different actors because this is um, – it's primarily to show at the end. It has nothing to do with what you use to film it. As long as you have plans of telling a good story, people will enjoy it. Like I'm going to be working with someone that you did an interview with recently um i'm sure you guys will see this interview soon or if yeah, it hasn't yeah. come out already it's but amar a, yeah amar will be um amar will be in one of them and once the hundredth one is done i'm gonna slowly release them okay well and how so, long did it take you to do the four that you've got done how long was that time span maybe a couple weeks a couple weeks eh yeah What's the writing process like? Are these going to tell... Okay, hold on. You don't have to answer certain parts, yeah. of course. But are these going to follow a trajectory, a storyline? Uh, are there going to be common commonalities through this? Or are these separate stories in each? Completely separate stories. The first four have no dialogue. It's primarily just music. And they all are under different cat- genres. So, are there going to be any that take up more than one episode spot or like more than one, more than one short or like, yeah. like, like I would say like an idea that I would have is like, uh, maybe how, you know, how black mirror, um, s- starts a storyline and then it'll just kind of pop up like an yeah. Easter egg sort of style. Where do you stand with, I'll let you finish telling me about your plans and then tell me where you stand with Easter eggs. <laughs> I, okay. I love Easter eggs. Um, if you watch anything I've done, there's always an Easter egg somewhere in there. Um, oh yeah, I know I, for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's always there's always some little tidbits, but for this, there actually are some Easter eggs because there's some locations that I love so much that I plan on going back to. Because I You're a location guru. Oh yeah, I just, I love when something looks cool. Mm. I love it. That is literally it makes me so happy. But um, we actually wanted to see the first few with just music. And now, once we get to five to ten, that's when we're going to move into dialogue. And it's going to be about one page per short film. It's nothing long. It's about, they're anywhere from 30 seconds to two and a half minutes. They're not very long. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for people to see that because I, um, I just want to inspire younger filmmakers to show them that, because um, I've been making short films I'm glad these are on private now and unlisted and stuff. <laughs> but I've been making short films on since you. I had a YouTube channel since I was like 11, and I made yeah. short films with my cousin. So yeah. it, um, I'm really excited for people to be able to do that for themselves. Even if your short films aren't any good when you start, yeah. I promise you they can be if you have even, the passion. Even if you're 11 or 12 years old, you know, and you're just f- shooting whatever. We have some messages from the cast that uh, were sent over for the the purpose of this video. It's a little more than just an interview. It's kind of a director's spotlight, like I said before. So we're going to put you in the spotlight. And um, I'm not going to watch these with you. I'm just going to 
clip them into the video nice and neatly. Tell me a little bit about, uh, because we're about to see the actors, tell us a little bit about each of them, how you came to meet them, cast them. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll start with Nevin. Nevin goes the furthest back. Um, so I went, when I got the job on Spider-Man, which we've talked about on the show before, um, I went to go film it, but first I had to get, I had to go get some stuff done, like a fitting done to where they wanted to pick my outfit before mm -hmm. we ever filmed. And the person who showed up to pick me up at the studio. So you show up, you have to call somebody and then someone comes to pick you up at a golf cart. Right. That happened to be Nevin. Oh. And so I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And so me and Nevin just riding around on a golf cart, he was taking me to go get my fitting. And so he, how, what was the best way to describe that? I was pretty much, I do this a lot. And I realized how weird it is now after hearing Jalen describe it. If I think someone would be good in a movie and they want to be an actor, I tell them that. Like, I'm very adamant. I'm like, hey, you can yeah. do that. You haven't and, told um, me that, Carson. Devin, you can be in a movie anytime you want. Okay. But thanks. um, so I told Nevin, I was like, "Hey, you should be. We're gonna work on something together. We're gonna do it." That's the best Sweet. way to do it, right off the bat. Hey, you, oh yeah, you should. Yeah. Right now. This is. That's. I'm not even gonna waste time. It's the same way I did it with Jalen. I walked up. I walked up to Jalen randomly. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna be an actor." And he was like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Okay, we're gonna do something together." Payton, I had new from the premiere of Zach's show, No Rest for the Wicked. Zach Branch, the right. who I was, yeah, yeah. Who was in No Return. And yeah. um, so that that kind of just was a cool meeting. And I saw her on another set. And then Reiko, she's so talented. I just found her yeah. through a casting call. And so I had no previous connections with her. But yeah, she was, she was really good to work with. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think, uh, and I think if I was to tell you one thing about each of them, I just want to make one quick statement about each one of them. Mm -hmm. Jalen is one of the most high energy, fill up the room with his bubbliness, just great people to be around. Like there is, I can't think of one bad thing I could say about Jalen. I think mm -hmm. that um, I think he's going to be probably one of the most talented actors in a long time. I think he has something. I think that uh, Nevin is incredibly just funny. He just, he has, Nevin has this humor mm -hmm. that it just happens so randomly. Like he'll be, he'll, he'll just be talking normally and just make the random joke, the most random joke. It's hilarious. And, um, but he's also just like Jalen, he's such a good actor. Like I didn't expect it because he hadn't done very much, but pretty much he, he showed up. And he's like, the nerves aren't going to get to me. And I was like, oh, hell. I was like, either means he's about to do incredible or he's about to do really bad. So I was really scared. Right. So then he just killed it. His nerves weren't, like, I was just like, what? You're nervous. You're either ready or you're going to, you're going to yeah. puke. So he was ready, I guess. Yep. And Peyton yeah. is such a sweetheart. Peyton is so kind to everyone. And Peyton is literally just that one person you want to be around. If you have anything, even the smallest inconvenience in your life, because she would do anything she can to make it easier on you. And Reka literally is like, what's the best way to describe Reka? The powerhouse? Facts, yeah. Like, a, like, like she's got like energy, like a kind of like she, a she's almost a jack of all trades where she could do a yeah. little bit of everything yeah um but yeah it's a little bit about all of them those are all my little acting babies and i'm excited kind of like no return i'm excited to see where they go <laughs> hi i'm jay lindsey robinson and i play the role of marcus in the short film running backwards it's kind of funny because I actually met Carson on a set that I had no intention of being a part of, but when I heard that one of my favorite actors were playing lead, I was like, you know what? Sure, I'll give it a shot. I'll do a little BG. Years ago, I guess technically, um, Carson 
came to work on uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, which I was a PA on, and we just, you know, we met, hit it off. He told me even then that he wanted uh, to work with me on something, and so he just always kept me updated when it was time to audition, and, you know, I, I got the thing, and uh, did my thing, and the rest is history, I guess. Hey guys, what's up? It's Peyton Standridge. I play Madison in Running Backwards. I got involved with the project by meeting Carson on set. We bonded, and when the time came, he sent me the audition. I'm Rekha Letzinger, and I play Mindy. I heard about Running Backwards through, I believe, a Facebook group, and then I sent an email, I shot my shot, had my resume and my demo reel, and it was really a shot in the dark. I had no idea what would happen, and then I got an email back, and then I had the opportunity to audition, and then there, of course, it's the same old same old with the callback and a chemistry read and before i knew it we were in these zoom calls for roughly a month and a group of random strangers were slowly but surely becoming real best friends or like real close friends i would say we're all pretty close and by the time we were filming we were able to tell this story about a bunch of friends um and not have to fake it which was really great <music> Awesome. I mean, it just, uh, he's me and him click super well. Um, he's just he's super passionate about acting, directing, really anything film related, which helps me as an actor at least. You know, just act <laughs> in general. Um, I really don't have any complaints when it comes to him. I think working with Carson was definitely so much fun. He's so professional and the set itself was amazing. All of the crew were so phenomenal. And if anybody ever has a chance to work with them, they definitely should. Fast forward to a month or two later and we are on the set of Running Backwards and it is amazing. Um, with that being said, you know, I'll have to say that working with Carson was easy peasy, easy breezy, a piece of cake. Working with Carson is really great because he tr really treats you like a person and allows you to bring that to the table. We had to come in and pretend to be long time best friends, like lifelong best friends. And that all felt real. Like we created this space where we all felt safe to get to know each other, to laugh, to be in those in-between moments. And then once he's there, our director Carson, once he's there, he's really just like in game mode. He just gets it done. So it all happens really quickly. And then he comes up with these ideas on the fly, which I'm sure he's had in his brain for a while, but it all feels very spontaneous. I would explain running backwards to someone who hasn't seen it as a story about grief and how grief is always going to be with you but you can't stay in it because you have to move on with your life even though that person's not there anymore so i would say running backwards i would say it's about grief and healing and transformation but ultimately i think it's about a group of friends that are there for each other even when they don't know how to be there for each other and somehow it all works I, it's a uh sad sweet little film that you should watch running backwards is a film about pain grief loss suffering um and how one may deal with those things um to me running backwards was definitely needed i feel that running backwards is is a must-see film in that you know it kind of helps people realize that although we may lose someone um, it's okay to grieve, it's okay to go through those things, but that person is never really, you know, actually gone. Um, that person is right there walking with you every step of the way. They're here in spirit, and they would want you to continue on in life, you know, after you're done with your grieving process. You know, be sad, take a little time to yourself, do what you need to do, but by any means, you know, by no means, stop your life as well, you know? They want to see you be successful, they, they love you, they care about you, keep going, push through. And Carson did an amazing job with writing that in his film. I remember my first time reading through the script and just being, you know, my tears were, my eyes were full of tears by the end of me reading it. That's all for today. Thank you is, thank you so much Carson for the amazing opportunity. Peace. There's so many, there's so much underlying talent. You know how people say that 
the next such and such is out there, but because of their circumstances, we'll never see them or, you know, I believe that truly, like the world's next greatest scientist, next mathematician, next actor, all of that are out there. And what I see here in Niagara, in my local community, is a, a, an incredible amount of talent that is unseen, that doesn't go seen very far. And, but another thing that I've kind of found is the, the circle of uh, support, the circle of support, I like to call it. It definitely stretches down south from Toronto to all the way down through North Carolina and then through LA. Like it, like it kind of goes th through that, that, that loop and Vancouver, right? BC. Yeah. So the, there's that circle of support. Kevin L. Johnson has always been supporting all of the actors and all of the people that I've met, including yourself, have just shown this this support for these underlying talent yeah. and actors and i think that that's so important to recognize and clarify um and it's uh i think that it it gives a lot of hope it should give some hope to some actors because you know what yeah. if you can't get this role in this movie why don't you meet some people and 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 get creative be creative do some yeah. stuff but um but yeah so that that's just where i was where I went to when you said that. Yeah. I think um I think a lot of people think that all these actors because they go to the movie theater and they watch these movies that constantly have the same actors in them and I think all these yeah. actors are they they're good and that's why they're getting work but um I feel like uh there isn't much new talent brought in very often. Um Netflix I don't, is doing a decent job of that. Yeah. And through certain stuff, yeah, like Joe Quinn, like you know, yeah. overnight, bam. But. I'm I'm excited to see what comes in the next ten years, though, because I believe if you're not getting work, make your own. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love Kevin Smith, including myself, and he he made it himself. He made he made he wanted a career in the industry, so he made his own film. He um, so I believe other people if they believe that the work they're striving for is not working out for them. I believe they should just try and make their own and see if they have fun. Yeah. You know, I think it's realistic that the, the community could be self sustaining on an independent basis. Do you think yeah. so? I don't know if it'll ever be independent, no. but I do believe it could be possible. It just enough people would have to be, willing to support each other because a lot of people in the industry and this is interviewing and because i did interviews for a while this is interviewing this is acting this is directing sadly there are more people out there who would rather see you fall than would rather see you succeed there sure. are plenty of people who would watch your short film or watch your interview just to critique it and i believe when we start just primarily supporting each other then it'll be it'll be independent and then you'll be able to do it with a group of people that support each other and you'll be able to do that but only when people come together that'll be when that happens and i don't know how close we are how far we are from that right well i mean if that's cool with you i think that that's a pretty cool place to end this interview and uh we hit some great topics great topics and in our next one we can pick it up and uh go from there and yeah, we'll man. see you then. We'll see you when you're done. Hundred short films. That I, will man. take you about so four. So it takes you about a week, eh? A week each to film. Pretty so, much, yeah. We'll see you in a year. We'll see you in a year, Carson. Oh yeah. All right. Hi, right, man. Thank you for having me on. It's been great. It's been a pleasure. All right, man. Cheers. Hi, right, man.